All right, we are rolling. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Fred D. Borges Show, and you are rocking with your host, Fred D. Borges. Now, before we get started, make sure you guys smash that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video. We got to fit into the algorithm. We are at 119 subscribers. I wanted to get to 125 by the end of this month, but it looked like we're going to smash it right out of the park. So let's get to 200 by the end of this month. I'm challenging myself. Let's get to 200 by the end of this month. And today, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to switch it up a little bit. Instead of talking about sports, instead of talking about anime, instead of talking about sneakers, music, we are going to do a movie review. This is going to be the first movie review we are going to be doing. And I don't know. We might have more movies on the way. Let me know what you guys... Let me know the, the, down in the comment section below. Let me know what movies I should review. I think that'll be pretty cool. I can watch, review so on and so forth, but we are going to review It Ends With Us, a summer, a late summer hit. Um, it Ends With Us. Now, the reason we're going to be doing this movie is because, like I said, supposedly this is a late summer hit. I was able to go and see it this past weekend, not by choice. My girlfriend dragged me to the movies to go see it because she said that she read the book. She loved the book, so she figured that the movie would be just as good, maybe even better than the book. But boy, was she wrong. Boy, was she wrong. But we're going to get into all that. Me personally, I had no expectation seeing it. I thought the movie was pretty good, you know, to say the least. I thought it was pretty good. Um, kind of predictable, but like I said, we're going to get into all that. So what I found out about this book is the book was written by Kylene Hoover. Uh, it's the number one best-selling New York Times novel. It was best-selling novel of 2022 and 2023. And like I said, this movie claimed to be a uh, late summer hit. This movie was directed by Justin Baldini. And you have actors and actresses such as Justin Baldini himself, the director. And you have Blake Lively, who plays Lily Bloom, who just opened a flower shop and crosses path with Ryle Kincaid, who is a neurosurgeon that is played by Justin Baldini. Um, so this Justin Baldini character, he is somewhat uh, a player, a womanizer who decides to give a real relationship a shot while Lily not knowing Ryle's dark side. And soon she realizes that you know, she's falling into the same exact patterns and motions that her mother experienced when she was a child, you know. And then after all that, with all the drama going on, you have Atlas Kurrigan, who was Lily's teenage love, who's played by Brandon Sklenar. And basi basically, you know, Lily's teenage love, they're all grown up now. Uh, he owns this restaurant that Lily has no clue that you know, he's the owner. And Lily and Ryle ends up eating there. They go for a second time only for Atlas to realize the abuse that Lily is going through and encourage her to get out. Uh, I feel like this movie can definitely really teach you a lesson about abuse. Uh, you know, hear me out on this. So because as a relationship, as this, you know, as a relationship spirals, it becomes less about the romance and more about cycles of abusive relationships and lies we tell ourselves, kind of like, you know, uh, an illusions to believe we're not falling into them. Uh, with a partner like Ryle, you know, he's so good at hiding his true colors that Lily starts to question herself that maybe, you know, she's misinterpreting certain things, you know, only to realize that and she's becoming the one thing she didn't want to become. And that's pretty much becoming, uh, you know, a victim to being in an abusive relationship. Um, Overall, like I said, I would say that this movie is definitely really predictable. Um, my girlfriend, like I said, she didn't really enjoy it that much. You know, she didn't really enjoy it. Uh, I walked out of there. I had zero expectations about this movie. Her expectation was through the roof because she said that the book was so good. Like I said, I didn't really mind this movie so, too much. I literally told her that this was a lifetime movie with grade B actors and actresses to where a Lifetime movie you would grab you know a D grade actor and actresses as to why you know this movie is a summer hit because you have B grade actors and actresses and that's not to take away from this movie it's not to take away from any you know Lifetime movies I mean I call it how I see it it is what it is and 
watching this movie, like I said, it was very predictable, but there was also a lot of things when this movie was playing that she would whisper to me in the movie theater saying, well, in the book, this happened, uh, you know, in the book, this happened. And there were certain things that weren't getting, I guess, into depth where in the book, they were getting more into depth in a book, in the book, supposedly it was more straight in front of your face, just like how, you know, um, Lily was getting ab abused. We were kind of looking at it, at least for me personally, because I've never read the book. I'm not a big book reader. Um, so like I said earlier, I've never read the book. I'm just going in as a casual watcher to see this movie. And what I realize is a lot of the times when she was getting abused, my girlfriend was telling me in the book, it was straight to the point. No, she was getting abused. But in the movie, it kind of interpreted to what she was visualizing, which was, no, I'm not getting abused, you know, because Ryle was hiding it so well with his character that she kind of, like I said earlier, was misinterpreting. Maybe she's questioning, you know, she's questioning herself like, yo, am I really getting abused? And I thought the way that they flipped that opposed from the book being straight out, I thought the way that they flipped it in the movie, I thought that was actually pretty dope what they did because I felt as if, it kind of gets you thinking like, man, wait, is she really getting abused or are these accidents? You know what I mean? Uh, so I thought that was actually pretty dope what they did. Um, like I said, this movie personally for me, I'd give it a strong five. Would I ever watch it again? Probably not. I don't think so. I told my girlfriend, like if she's watching it, then, you know, I'll sit down and watch it with her, uh, if anything. But she also said that she would probably never watch this movie again because she was really kind of disappointed in a way. And, you know, it's it's actually kind of crazy because I for it to be like a summer hit. So I get a lot of scores off of IMBD and a lot of them scores I really take with a grain of salt. It kind of just gives me an idea like where the where a movie would stand, because some movies that they rate. It could be a five rating, but personally, if I watch it, I'd probably give it like a six, 6.5. Vice versa, if, so, if a movie gets like a nine rating, I'd probably, that nine rating movie, I'd probably rate like a six or a five, you know what I mean? So I always take things with a grain of salt. However, I kind of like go off of that as kind of like um, a guide, a guidance to see like, okay, let me see where this movie stands. So the movie got a seven and it's somewhat crazy to me because a lot of her friends that went to go see the movie, they personally don't like it themselves, which is kind of weird for it for IMBD to give it a seven. I just felt as if, you know, not only that, but I've, I've also been seeing a lot of like, you know, movie threads. I also been seeing a lot of like comments and stuff saying, saying that this movie, you know, didn't live up to the hype. It didn't live up to the book that was oh so good and I don't know I just find it kind of weird how IMBD I mean they, they wind up giving it a seven or a seven by you know people who watch the movie they wind up rating it you know pretty high and you know average out to a seven which I find kind of weird um so yeah I mean overall to me the movie is it's a, like I said it's a strong five I probably never watch it again. My girlfriend said that she was disappointed that she would never, you know, watch it again. So overall, with that being said, I hope I didn't spoil really a lot of the movie for you guys, <laughs> even though this kind of is like kind of like a spoiler alert. Um, so with that being said, this like I said, this is our first movie review. I give this movie a strong five. Guys, 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 make sure you guys subscribe to the channel Make sure you guys like this video. We have more movie reviews coming soon. Um, like I said, just let me know down in the comment section what movies should I watch? What, what movies should I review? And uh, and yeah, and we'll take it from there. So guys, please subscribe. We are at 119. Let's get to 200 by the end of this month. And I will catch you on the next one. Peace.